Good morning, everyone. My name is Mighty Stream, and today is September the 22nd. I'm looking forward to doing your Just for Today in a Meditation. I'm brought to you by Hope Through Navigation, and this is our Hood Recovery Services. You can reach me at recoveryofhope21 at gmail.com. Let's go ahead and get into our meditation. Keeping the gift. Life takes on a new meaning when we open ourselves to this gift. That is taken from the basic text, page 107. Neglecting our recovery is like neglecting any other gift we've been given. Suppose someone gave you a new car. Would you let it sit in the driveway until the tires rotted? Would you drive it, ignoring routine maintenance, until it expired on the road? Of course not. You would go to great lengths to maintain the condition of such a valuable gift. Recovery is also a gift, and we have to care for it if we want to keep it. While our recovery doesn't come with an extended warranty, there is a routine maintenance schedule. This maintenance includes regular meeting attendance and various forms of service. We'll have to do some daily cleaning, our 10th step, and once in a while, a major fourth step overhaul will be required. But if we maintain the gift of recovery, Thanking the giver each day, it will continue. The gift of recovery is one that grows with the giving. Unless we give it away, we can't keep it. But in recovery, our recovery, excuse me, but in sharing our recovery with others, we come to value it all the more. Just for today, my recovery is a gift and I want to keep it. I'll do the required maintenance and I'll share my recovery with others. Beautiful. Let's take a moment of silence followed by the wee version of the serenity prayer. Moment of silence now, please. God. Grant us the serenity to accept the things we cannot change, the courage to change the things that we can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Please and thank you. You know, we all talk about having been given the gift of desperation. And sometimes I wonder you know, about that terminology because actually the the beauty of that particular gift is founded in the horrors of our addiction and us reaching a point of surrender. So it's kind of like the beauty and the beast. There's a little bit of horror in there, uh, but it becomes beautiful. And I've always said that beauty is in the eye of the beholder. You and I can look at the same outfit and I'll be, I would say, I'm not wearing that. <laughs> and you, on the other hand, might say, that is beautiful. I love that. It's the same thing. When we're talking about this gift of desperation, people look at it differently. How can you call something that was so horrible a gift? of desperation. Well, it was the desperation that put you in a position where you needed to surrender. And once you surrendered, you surrendered to win. And you began to win by staying clean and transforming your personality, your life with the principles of this spiritual program. So therefore, it now becomes a gift because of how you personally see it, the beholder, right? Keeping that gift is what this Just for Today in a Meditation is talking about. How do you keep 
this gift. It takes on a new meaning when we open ourselves to this gift. You have to go beyond the initial surrender, beyond uh, just, you know, starting to work your steps and have a discussion with your sponsor about your fourth step, right? It's something that needs to be maintained on a regular basis. And I think some people, they tire of the gift. I can remember many gifts that I have been given, some expensive, some not so expensive, some beautiful, some not so beautiful. There's even some very expensive gifts that I thought to myself, wow, that is someone that has spent hundreds of dollars, right? of their hard-earned money to give me a gift. I'm going to treasure that. I'm going to keep it in its original package and I'm only going to use it when I absolutely feel the moment is right. In some instances, the moment never came. The gift is still in its expensive package. But don't think I don't think about it every day. Well, maybe not every day, but frequently I think about this uh, particular gift. Actually, there's a couple, but there's one in particular that I'm getting closer to the point where I feel I want to pull it out and use it regularly. Okay, so this meditation is talking about gifts and how they come with the assumed expectation that one would use it. But at the very least, even if you're not using it, you will care for it, treasure it, if it's something electronic or mechanical, there is an assumption that you will read the user manual so that you know how to operate it. These are simple, basic, mindful considerations about gifts. I have a beautiful gift that my husband gave me. I drive it every day. I take care of it to the best of my ability. Sometimes I have to hire someone to help me with a particular, you know, something like changing the oil. Right? So how are we doing with the gift that we've been given? You have to, first of all, open yourself up to the gift of recovery. You could be a person that just happened to find this podcast. It's not very large. There aren't a lot of uh, subscribers. There aren't a lot of views. And you may be thinking, why would I even bother with something? Uh, a lot of times I look at YouTube and I'm looking at various podcasts or videos and I'm thinking to myself they only got one or two views why would I bother because a lot of times big things come in small packages and the message here today if you just happen to land on this podcast is about you and about your recovery and the gift of recovery that you have been given that came through the gift of desperation. Maybe you had the gift of desperation and you relapsed. You had to go find another bottom. You'll stop finding bottoms when you stop digging. Have you heard that? At any point in time, you can resurrender. And as you know, Stopping is not the easiest thing to do. 
There's some withdrawal symptoms that come with that. And some of that may need to be monitored by medical staff. But there's treatment centers looking for people like you and I to make money off of. Some of them better than others. You can do it. You can ask for the gift of desperation to be given back to you. That is one gift you can always get again. For the most part. For the most part. Right? In the sense that you can always use again. And hopefully desperation will come in that relapse and you will have enough time to recover again, right? So if you get that gift of desperation again or you have had it, how are you treating it? There's some things that are so monogamous about recovery, right? There's some things that just deal with you, your emotions, and how you proceed with the course of your day. You wouldn't say, let's say, maybe you received a television. I have a huge television and very little space for it, right? You wouldn't invest in something like that without understanding how to make it work. You know, of course you have a remote, but most televisions also have a button to turn the television on. Do you know where to find it? Is it on the side? Is it on the left side, the right side? Is it underneath towards the center? Is it underneath all the way to the right, all the way to the left? You need to figure it out. And once you push that button, you can move around in the menu. Or you can use the remote. But do you, in an instance where you may lose your remote in the couch, do you know where the button for your television is? Surely you do. Most people become familiar with the gift. So that's all this is about, is your gift of recovery. Are you familiar with it? Are you understanding the spiritual principles that come with recovery? Are you understanding how to apply them in all of your affairs? You may be one of those people that uh, you have false humility, right? You, you're you humble when it's convenient. Maybe now you're in a relationship with someone and you're humble when you're dealing with them because it's convenient. Maybe they have the most money in the relationship and when you're out grocery shopping or at the store or at the mall or running errands after payday, right? Saturday. It's convenient for you to be humble in their presence because you know the ask is coming. There's something you want, a new outfit, some jewelry, some cologne. Uh, it could, you know, men could do the same thing, right? I need to be humble <laughs> with her when she gets paid because there's some 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 gadget I want and I know she can afford it. And if I act right, she'll give it to me, right? But get an argument. Get in a argument with your partner. Do you have true humility? Do you have true humility where you're able to hear them out and actively listen and make sure that you understand what they're saying? Or does 
the false humility now switched to arrogance and pride. Where nothing that's coming out of their mouth, it sounds like Charlie Brown's teacher, right? Wah, wah, wah. It does not make any sense to you. And you don't have time for it. And you could care less about the point that they're making. This is what I'm talking about. The gift of recovery has to be maintained and you have to do the work where you understand who you are, how you respond to certain situations, what your character defects are and how they cause you to fall short time and again, sometimes to your embarrassment and to the harm of other people. That's why when you come out of six and seven, you, you go immediately into step eight of making that list of people you have harmed as a result of your character defects, right? Self-centeredness being one where you sought self-gratification at the cost of everything and everyone so that you can stay high. So that you could alter your mind with a substance which would make your reality seem more tolerable. But in most instances, we were so high, we couldn't even participate in our actual realities. We dropped the ball so many times. You know, maybe we didn't intend to. We just wanted to make the situation a little bit more doable. And ended up not even being able to show up for the people we say we love or for ourselves, for our children. You know, and so this is why it's important that each one of us focus on the keeping of the gift of recovery. And, and the gift does grow better, honestly. It does grow better if you continue to give it away. If you continue to you know, show newcomers how to do it, right? Show them how just by being humble and sitting and listening and sharing their experience, strength, and hope, they can find the strength to continue on. You know, I think this is the best thing since sliced butter. This is a beautiful program. My recovery is a gift to me and I want to keep it. And I hope that you do too. And I am personally committed to the maintenance that is required. And I am committed to doing things like this, where I'm able to give back freely what has been freely given to me. And I'm always amazed. Every day seems long to me. Every day seems long to me. Yesterday was about a 13 and a half, 14 hour day by the time I actually got home. It was a long day. But when I walk through the door and I see my family waiting to greet me and cheer me on and hug me and love me, I miss them so much. But if, if what I do is able to make sure we have what we need, I'm glad to do it. And actually what I do, I can do with my eyes closed. I love what I do. Right? So even though sometimes the maintaining of the gift and the giving away might cost me something, the rewards that come with it make that price seem like nothing, right? I want you to live that life. I want you to live that life. How are you going to maintain your gift of recovery today? My name is Mighty Stream. I've enjoyed talking to you and I will be talking to you tomorrow. <laughs>